Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and we have a Sparrows Reload Kit here, and this is my review and guide of it. Um, what is a Reload Kit? Well, it's uh, a kit which comes in what looks like a, an old tobacco tin with a, a Sparrows embossed uh, coffin uh, logo on there, and um, it contains, and I'll show you in a minute, some keys um, and various pins and springs and a little pinning mat and follower designed to reload their range of practice locks. Now I say their range, if you have a um, a Schlage style kick cylinder like this uh, with the same keyway you'll be able to use all the keys in it and all the pins and springs. Um, you won't necessarily know if you've got a compatible a lock until you, you buy this but um, I do have a, a, a Schlage uh, in my collection which uh, these keys do fit into so it's likely you might as well however there's no guarantee um, so but you know clearly this reload kit will work with the Sparrows range of cutaway and practice locks put that to one side let's actually have a look at what you get inside this um, the practice lock that I just showed you that cutaway was about 25 Canadian dollars um, this is a bargain at 20 Canadian dollars let's see what you get inside this rather nice tin well you get a number of keys and these keys are bitted differently and you get the key pins to be able to allow you to um, repin your lock and have the key work so this one is relatively flat with a slight uh, raise up that's a blue one the green one is um, high low high it's quite a nice bitting to practice on it was a uh, very high on uh, the last pin we have we also have um, the opposite which is a black one which is low high low and a red one which is um, some very lows with a very high peak in the middle and some lows at the back so you do get a range of different fittings compare that to the um, the a standard uh, bitting you get with the um, which is uh, lows followed by high and you can see that you can give yourself a challenge uh, if you had a practice lock you can give yourself a challenge um, with a number of different types of uh, common bitting variations um, already for you know 20 Canadian dollars around 13 pounds UK this, this is just for this alone would be worth it to me so that is excellent you also get, um, for the back of these types of locks, they have a sprung kind of retaining pin. You get some um, springs and spare retaining pins in case you ping them across the room when you're disassembling. Always useful. You get some spare springs for the actual uh, Bible of the lock itself uh, up in here because um, you will lose and mangle them, especially if you're new into disassembling locks. Um, you get your follower wrong and you kind of end up dragging a spring through the rest of the lock. That That's... Uh, really really useful to have um again absolute bargain uh, sparrow sell this resin follower um separately uh, for a, a few dollars and uh this is really useful and i'll show you um how useful that can be in a second as part of my guide to how to use this kit but the the reason why i was so keen on buying this and um it's so rare to find bags of security pins separately as you can see here that we got a whole bag of security pins. Let me show you up close um, some of those pins so you can see them in more detail. These driver pins here come with mushroom pins, mushroom spools, very uh, common in some Yale locks, the ever-present spool and serrated drivers. So you can imagine with the different keys that you have here all these different keys um, with those different security pins you can have a whale of a time um, repinning up your Schlage style locks with all sorts of um, shenanigans to puzzle you for weeks to come and and I love this I have to say I absolutely love this this is a, a fantastic addition you get um, a miniature pinning mat and uh, and pinning tray. I mean, how how amazing is that? This is just perfect. Um, so 
I mean, value-wise, for 20 Canadian dollars, I, I don't know how they do it. This is absolutely stunning, compared, especially when you compare this is 25 dollars just for this uh, this cutaway kick. Um, you know, this whole kit here um, with all the security pins and the and the, the follower is brilliant. They have a variant, by the way, which also comes with. Uh, some pinning tweezers. I didn't get that because I've got some pinning tweezers for my Huck disassembly kit. But, um, you know, I would suggest that since if you need to reload one of these locks, you need a minimum of two pieces of equipment, which is um, a follower and a pair of pinning tweezers, then I would just make sure that if you don't have pinning tweezers, you buy the version with. One thing which I do think this kit should be sold with as a package is um, a... Uh, probably a non-cutaway kick cylinder, just a just one which you can uh, pin up, um, because you know this is a reload kit. You can't use it without um, a compatible lock, and vice versa. Um, you know, having a, a compatible lock uh, without some different keys and pins is not that useful when you're trying to learn. So, you know, I think as a minimum they should uh, throw in a, a you know a, a cheap. Um, compatible kick with this set and you know up the price to say 30 Canadian dollars that would be my my big tip okay so um, if you're going to uh, reload uh, one of these locks and I'm not going to um, uh, uh, spend too long on this but you can use this resin follower and this has little crenellations in to match the uh, crenellations in uh, this here which means that you can basically just put it in if you get it right, and I'm failing miserably to depress that pin, there you go. It keeps and keeps some downward force on it, and you'll see that if you unscrew it clockwise, that collar at the back will just undo. There we go. Then you can use your um, little pinning tray to put your various bits and bobs on. You'll see that uh, you've got your uh, retaining pin there which I can just put up here and a spring which will fall out okay well how do I go about reloading this well if you're going to be repinning the whole thing you don't need to worry about um, you know careful uh, disassembly at this point I would put in the key that you um, you want like that I would turn it uh, clockwise by a small turn I'd get that resin follower back out Make sure that your gap isn't aligned with the, the top here, otherwise you'll end up with your um, driver pins falling into that gap and it, it all go messy. Make sure that you have the flat bit of that follower at the top and push the follower through the core. So I've already sort of shown this like that. Then, if you just want to um, re-pin uh, to get a different key to work, I'll show you that. And uh, you can just um, tap out um, your, your your pins. I'm going to do it in order just to show you how I do it. But uh, uh, you can start with, um, so cover up all the rest. Um, start with pin 1 and just uh, tap that out into um, your pinning mat. 2. Three, oh, three. I'll change that in a minute. Four and five. There we go. And I've just used my pinning tweezers to move those into the right positions. There you go. And then you can choose any um, key you want. Don't need this one anymore. I'm going to choose the blue one because it's there. And um, we'll just repin it up. Now, of course. You know, if you want to um, see how you change the the pins in the Bible, go see my review and guide on um, the cutaway lock uh, itself, because I'll show you that. But I just want to show you how you'd um, repin with these keys, because that's really the main advantage of these locks. So you take your key. And you would uh, take your core and you'd put the key in. Now, if you actually look at the bissings, it's relatively flat. So, um, But you'll see at the back, you've got a very high pin. This key pin will be shorter. This will be the next shortest. Then these two will be relatively uh, the same. And this will be the longest one here. Pin two will be the longest. So you can do it that way. If you've got a, um, 
a core holder, then this can be very useful. You can do it in your hand, but you can also use a core holder if you've got a Loctus assembly kit and do it like this. Okay, then what you do is you, you take, you look at your pins. Remember I said the shortest one would be the one at the back, and this is a six pin core. So bear in mind, if you put this pin down in here, the key will not operate it. The key is a five pin key. So if you get that wrong, the key won't work. You still pick it, but your key won't work, which is sort of the whole point. Um, so let me just get that pin right. Tap it in, and you see that's the right one. Then um, I believe it's the next shortest I was next. You can tell they're right because they will sit flush with the top of the lock. And then I've got um, the two which were uh, the next shortest and remember with key pins you want the the, the bit which is beveled at the bottom and the rounded bit at the top. If I was to put this, uh, the, the pin in the wrong chamber um, you'll see that happen hopefully if I do this he says um, you'll see that the pins don't sit right you've got one which is a little bit too low and one which is probably a little bit too high peeking out a little bit you probably won't notice you might even be able to jam it in to um, the core so just be careful the the tolerances in these locks are quite thin if you have done it wrong you don't need to tip all the pins out you can actually sometimes uh, just move the key slightly to be able to um, move the pins up a little bit like this to grab them then I can put them into the right slots like this so a little pro tip you don't need to tip them all out you can actually sometimes use a key to to move those pins up and down now you can see they're all flush if you've got a follower you can turn it sorry a holding turn the core in it and you see if it moves freely it's fine um, as I said you can see my video on the um, actual cutaway lock itself to see how you would uh, uh, put stuff back into the, um, the Bible but uh, again just make sure that you follow the follower back out like this turn it, remove the key, that will then lock up into the core. Then you can reassemble the back of your lock quite quickly and just do it in reverse. So you put the retaining pin spring in, the retaining pin, start to put the collar on a couple of turns with your finger, then use that resin follower again like this to then just turn it clockwise and you want to make sure that you turn it enough that um, you don't screw it all the way down and and seize that lock core up that plug will seize up if you screw the back on too tight and now you'll see that you've reloaded it with a different key bitting and you're ready to go so what do i think of this kit um it's excellent. I mean, there's, it's it's just an, an amazing uh, kit. Uh, the, the value is stunning. Um, I, I don't have anything bad to say about it, other than that um, you know it really should come with a, a kick cylinder that's compatible um, for maybe uh, you know as an option at a higher price. But I mean, how can you go wrong? A bag of um, security pins, uh, four keys with um, with you know different. Um, uh, bittings, um spares pins and springs and i mean it's 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 a, for 20 canadian dollars about 13 pounds i mean you just can't get better so you know if you do have a compatible uh kick cylinder like this uh, schlegsal um core i've got here you really should go out and get one of these it is just brilliant you know even the the, the mat and the follower alone or even the keys alone are worth uh, the money you're spending okay hope you enjoyed that uh i will see you next time